Yo, Prime members, so check this out. We are here to talk about our favorite thing in the world, and that is Amazon Prime. That's right. We all have different interests, but there's one thing that brings us together. Prime. As members ourselves, we found ways to maximize our Prime benefits to get the most out of our passions. From fast and free shipping, streaming of movies and music, and even exclusive deals and discounts, Prime has it all. And what's great is that you can use all of these services to elevate your hobbies and interests. Whether you're a bookworm, a fitness fanatic, or a gaming guru, Prime has something for everyone. I promise you that. So go ahead, explore and indulge in all that Prime has to offer. We promise you won't be disappointed. Time to get more out of whatever you're into, Prime. And that's that on that. What's up, everybody? You are now listening to the Success Playbook Podcast, where we talk about pop culture, life and career success, and of course, we're going to talk about who got dunked on the night before. <laughs> I'm your host, Chanel S. Reynolds, and I've been in the sports industry for several years. My goal is to take what I've learned from years of dominating the sports industry as a black woman to help my listeners defy the odds and level up in life and career. Now, let's dig into this week's episode. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Chanel S. Reynolds, and you are listening to the Success Playbook Podcast. Thank you again for joining. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for trusting my voice and my content. Y'all, we are already on episode two. It feels like just a short time ago we were on episode one, but here we are moving forward and progressing. <laughs> Shout out to y'all for rocking with your girl. All right, let's start the show with The Locker Room. I am certainly proud of this individual. Don't know him personally, but Shout out to you, big homie, LeBron James. For those of you who don't know, LeBron James has become the first active NBA player to be named a billionaire by Forbes. I don't care where you are. Let's just take a moment and clap it up for King James. Y'all, this is amazing. This is record-breaking. This is astonishing. Shout out to the Black King, LeBron James. LeBron is definitely... And he's everybody's, one, one of their top players. If you say that LeBron is not one of your top players, then you are a bona fide hater and I do not trust you. If you don't root for LeBron in some, some shape, way, or form, whether it be on the court, through his philanthropic duties, through some of whatever it is that he's doing out there in the community, whether it be making a voice, being a voice, uh, being a driver of, of social justice, whether it be... Uh, in the realm of education, whatever it be. He has his hand in several pots. So if you can't pick a pot and clap for it, if you can't pick something and be happy for him about it, you just a hater. You a hater. You a hater. Shout out to you, LeBron. We're going to get LeBron on the podcast one day. Don't ask me when. Don't ask me where. Don't even ask me how. But just mark my words. It's going to happen. LeBron and Savannah. Because you got to clap it up. That's his rib. Shout out to LeBron and Savannah. Can we just take a pause there for Black Love? Can we just take a pause there for a good, wholesome family? Can we just take a pause there just to soak in the ambiance of Blackness? I love it. I hope you're enjoying this week's episode so far. If you haven't already, be sure to grab your copy of The Success Playbook, written by yours truly. This book shares with readers some of my secrets to success, including understanding your power, being intentional, unleashing your beast mode, and my ultimate favorite, the art of taking L's. Grab your copy at www.chanelsreynolds.com. All right, let's pivot into our hot topics for the day. So for those of you who don't know, hot topics are where we discuss culture and current events happening uh, in the media. The first hot topic, the only hot topic, actually, <laughs> today's hot topic is Netflix. So if you haven't heard, Netflix has actually went ahead and canceled uh, the various different channels that they had to address historically marginalized groups. For Okay, let's backtrack because I know that on the last episode, you'll hear me say the term like historically marginalized groups, people of color, or I'll name the specific group in which I'm trying to address because I don't use that word minority. My homeboy, Rashad Lambert, Rashad Lambert, shout out to Rashad from Philly, um, founder of Forbes of Culture, shout out to Forbes of Culture. 
my homeboy Rashad Lambert wrote an article for Forbes that was um, titled, I am not a minority. I'm very intentional about using that, not using that word minority. There is nothing inferior about me. Minority to whom? Minority to what? Minority where? We're, no, we're canceling that word minority. We're not using that word to address groups. Let's call out the group or let's use terms like historically marginalized people. Let's call out the group or let's use terms such as people of color. I am not using that word minority. I haven't used it in years and I advise you all to do the same. It's even to the point where even like if I I get to see like some sort of press release for whether it be my company or any nonprofit boards that I'm on, like I will literally, and they've known that like they start to use other words now because they know that that's something I don't, I don't really like to communicate is that word minority. Um, I'll say, Hey, can we, who are we trying to address here instead of using that word minority? Are we talking about women? Are we talking about African-Americans? Are we talking about the Latinx community or Latino community, however you identify? Who are we trying to address here? Let's call it out because we're not using this word minority. Let's not hide behind this big word so that people have to search and figure out what we're talking about. No, let's say it with our chest. Let's identify who we're trying to address and let's not call them minorities. So that's just where I stand. I know that was a long rant, but hopefully you get the picture and hopefully you all start to adopt that concept as well. Because again, shout out to Rashad. I love the article that he wrote for Forbes. Okay, going back to Netflix. So Netflix has ended their, um, they've dismantled their accounts, their social media accounts and their efforts that were driven by historically marginalized groups to champion diversity at Netflix. So I don't know if you remember accounts like Strong Black Lead. It was a Netflix account, but it was powered uh, to amplify Black voices or even uh, the things like Cantoro, which was for the Latinx or Latino community, or Golden, which was for uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander community, or Most, um, which I believe was for their LGBTQ plus community. So all of those efforts that they've implemented a couple of years ago have now ended. All of those people, all of those historically marginalized people, those people of color, all of those writers, all of those creatives are now out of a job. So let's take a look back at timing. Hmm. Okay, so these efforts were implemented a couple years ago. What else happened a couple years ago? Oh, that's right, the murder of George Floyd. Now, I really hate to assume this, but it is what it is. It seems like Netflix implemented this thing to support these groups around the murder, around the timeline of the murder of of George Floyd, which was the right thing to do. It seems like they woke up in that moment and they said, let's make some things right and let's make sure that we're uh, amplifying these voices. But two years later, it's now gone. And you pulled the plug and all these people are now unemployed. So I have no, I, I, I have no reason. I have nothing else to think, but it was performative. And black people, we called it out a couple years ago. We said, all right, y'all doing all this, but is this going to exist in a few years? Y'all are doing all this, but is this even real? Is this even genuine? Do y'all even care about us? Or is this like for performance purposes? Netflix is giving performative. Netflix is giving, hey, let's do this for the time being. Oh, it's too much now. Oh, we can't afford it anymore. Okay, we won't put any more resources into this thing. Oh, and by the way, you're fired. Netflix is giving you never cared. Now, I know that's not the case because you have some big DEI powerhouses that work at Netflix. So what I'm trying to, I, I like to assume positive intent 
I like to assume the best case scenario. So what I am assuming in my head is that this is a strategy to build something bigger and better. Don't ask me how, don't ask me what, don't ask me when. This is a strategy to build something bigger and better for your historically or for your diverse programming for Netflix to amplify these historically marginalized voices. Because what I refuse to believe is that this is something that you all implemented just for the time being. And you think that that little two years of work was enough. So you end it, you stop putting resources in it. I refuse to believe that. I, I totally refuse to believe that. So Netflix, please po prove me. Yo, Prime members, so check this out. We are here to talk about our favorite thing in the world and that is Amazon Prime. That's right, we all have different interests, but there's one thing that brings us together, Prime. As members ourselves, we found ways to maximize our Prime benefits to get the most out of our passions. From fast and free shipping, streaming of movies and music, and even exclusive deals and discounts, Prime has it all. And what's great is that you can use all of these services to elevate your hobbies and interests. Whether you're a bookworm, a fitness fanatic, or a gaming guru, Prime has something for everyone. I promise you that. So go ahead, explore and indulge in all that Prime has to offer. We promise you won't be disappointed. Time to get more out of whatever you're into, Prime. And that's that on that. Right. Netflix, please prove me right because I am, I'm standing with y'all Netflix. Now the world is, the world, look, you can go on LinkedIn and the people are not happy, but I'm standing with you, Netflix. I believe that this thing is going to turn around. I believe that you all have something else up your sleeve for diverse groups, for diverse communities. I hope, I would hope that you did not literally just pull the plug on this amazing thing that you were doing. Tell me what you think about Netflix, y'all. Shoot me a DM, write it in the comments. Tell me what you're thinking, but it's giving performative. I'm trying not to believe it, but it's giving performative. Here's the thing, we're all going to go through failure. The question isn't if you'll go through, the question is how you'll go through. Will you allow this moment to make you or break you? Will this circumstance make you bitter or make you better? Grab your copy of The Art of Taking L's to understand the breakdown of my personal concept, The Art of Taking L's. This book includes biblical and practical principles to help you effectively navigate through life and career changes. More importantly, the book shows its readers how to embrace adversity instead of running. You need this in your life. Grab your copy at www.chanelsreynolds.com. All right. So going into our next topic, that was heavy, I know. Um, but yeah, tell me what you think about that. Going into our next topic, I think I lied. I said I only had one topic. I actually have another topic, and it's actually a big topic, and it's going to allow us to pivot into our show segment. All right, so... If you're tuned into the streets, then you know about Monique versus D.L. Hughley. Y'all, this thing is a hot ghetto mess, okay? This thing is a hot mess, and the world has sat back and witnessed this hot mess unfold before our eyes. So I'm just going to give a brief summary I'm going to summarize everything. I'm not going into all the details. If you need to research it, that's fine. Um, do the research and then I'll, I'll just give the high level recap notes. Okay, so uh, Monique and D.L. Hughley were on a lineup together, a comedy lineup in Detroit. Now, I guess there was some disconnect as to who was to headline the show, who was to be the headliner, whether it was D.L. Hughley or Monique. Now, I do believe that this was a disconnect from the promoters, okay? None of the two parties had anything to do with the disconnect, to my understanding, allegedly, okay? So Monique took it upon herself to use her time that was intended for comedy to go on stage and to bash D.L. Hughley. And she just went in on him. I'm not going into all the details into what she said, but she just went in on him, okay? And it was all from the root of, 
hey, Monique don't open for nobody. Basically, put some respect on my name is what she was saying. But she said it to the crowd. Okay. And she said it toward D.L. Hughley. She hadn't had a conversation directly with D.L., allegedly, to my understanding. She hasn't had a conversation with D.L. about it. But she went to the crowd, addressed D.L. to the crowd, got them all fired up, talked about everything, talked about him, his, his, his family, his dog, whatever, okay? Talked about him, left the stage, and then D.L. had to perform and, of course, close out the show. Now, I believe that D.L. Um, maintained professionalism. He went into his jokes and they smashed. And then after the two wrapped up the comedy show, they then took it to Instagram and started to upload receipts. And one is uploading this documentation that says they're the headliner. And this other person is uploading this documentation that says they're the headliner. And they're just going literally back and forth. And DL said at one point, like against better judgment, I still decided to work for you. And at some point, you got to understand that you're the problem because you have a problem with Oprah. You have a problem with Tyler Perry. You have a problem with X, Y, Z. You got a problem with uh, uh, Luke, Peter, all the apostles, all the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. You got a problem with everybody in their mama. So DL said at some point, you have to understand that you are the problem. Now, hmm, I have two different perspectives on this. And this, I'll let you know when we actually pivot into the show topic. Here's my perspective. I do believe that what we experienced, what Monique was saying on stage, I do believe that that was someone who was just fed up with her name being played with. I also believe that she targeted that frustration to the wrong people. Number one, that ain't none of the audience's business. They came there to hear a show. They came there to laugh. They came there to experience lighthearted comedy. But you took your own grievances and frustrations and projected onto the audience. No, Monique. No. But I do understand that Monique is frustrated because she's tired of her name being played with. If you remember, she got blackballed in the industry. She's had these issues with these big name African-American figures the Oprah Winfrey's, the Tyler Perry's. So she felt blackballed. But Monique wants the world to know, like, again, Monique don't close for nobody. Y'all, if you remember, Monique's resume is long. Monique used to be in all the movies, all the, all the movies. Monique was a part of the Queens of Comedy, which was, you know, a few, some years back, but it's still very relevant. She was one of the Queens of Comedy and she closed that show. OK, Monique had her own talk show. I don't know if y'all remember, but on BET, she had like a late night talk show called The Monique Show. Um, What else? She had the Parkers. I think that was on for like five seasons. She was a regular star on the Moesha show. So Monique has a very long list of accomplishments. She has a very long list of being bad at what she does. And by bad, I mean great. Okay. Monique is comedy royalty. And you're right. She doesn't, she doesn't open for anybody. Monique should, should be closing shows. Okay. Now I'm not going to say who's better than who, who's more relevant than who. Um, what I will say is that DL Hughley has done a great job of consistently branding himself. And he has been consistently in the news and in the media and showcasing his craft over the past however many years, 30 plus years of doing comedy. Um, I will say that D.L. Hughley has also had a longstanding show. He's a radio personality. He's an activist. He's, again, done an amazing job of continuing to reinvent himself with the times. Right. Um, but again, I'm not saying who's better than who. But. Although Monique was frustrated, I do believe that there is a time and a place for everything. I have to admit, like, when I first heard the story, I was thinking, like, oh, my God, here we go again. Really? Monique, you doing something else? Like, they, they put you on the platform. They allowed you to do comedy. How you, how you fumble this bag? What you do? What happened now? But. I did have to take a step back because it made me think about 
how whenever any sort of like diverse group, whether it be a woman or a black woman or a black person, however, whenever we advocate for ourselves, it's looked at as it's looked at as negative. Even if you do research and you you look into some of the civil rights movements and you look into some of these big movements that cause great change for these different groups. A lot of these movements are named riots online and in our resources and in our books. Am I reaching or am I teaching? I don't know. Y'all, let me know. Google me, DM me, not Google me, DM me, uh, write in the comments. Let me know. Am I reaching or am I teaching? Like when I, when I, when I thought about that and I was like, oh, here we go again, Monique. I had to take a step back and I had to think like. I, this is the wrong way to go about it, but she's fed up. She's advocating for herself. It just took me back to whenever historically marginalized groups advocate for themselves, it's looked at in a neg negative light. So let's pivot into the show topic. So today's topic will be on how to effectively navigate for yourself. That's not the topic. <laughs> Today's topic is how to effectively advocate, not navigate, advocate for yourself. So in this scenario, Monique took what could have been a private conversation with lawyers, a conversation with her management team, and she took it on stage. Granted, I understand that she was fed up but I do believe that there is a time and a place for everything. Everything should not be for the public eye. As I sit back and, and I think about how it's usually perceived when people of color, especially, look, I'm not going to dance around this. All right, I'm a black woman. I have, a, I have a love and appreciation for Black women, so I'm going to dedicate this show to the Black woman. Whenever Black women speak up or speak for, speak for themselves, um, we always have like this stigma that lives in the back of our head that's like, oh my God, they're going to think I'm a quote unquote angry Black woman. Or like, oh my God, they're not going to take me seriously. Or, oh my God, they're going to look at me as if I'm difficult to work with if I advocate for myself right? So this is why I think it's important for us to understand how to you, how do you do this effectively? How do you do this without burning bridges? How do you do this so that it moves your career forward and not backward on a public platform, right? Because Monique, sis, yes, you're a legend, but this feud has gotten ugly. The first bad step you took was you took you made it public. And now we have people, now you're talking about the man's family and you're doing digs and all this is unnecessary. Right? Like all this is completely unnecessary. This could have been a private conversation. And when I first when I first saw Monique on stage, like I was excited. Like I didn't know it was going to be a bad report. I was excited because the world had blackballed her. I was excited because 50 Cent a couple months ago said like, yo, I'm going to put Monique on because like she is so funny. I'm going to put her back on. So I was excited for that. And then, of course, you had Lee Daniels who gave his apology. OK, you waited until the world apologized and now you getting back on the bandwagon. No. Um, but anyway, so I was excited for that. But then since you you're back on the big stage and you allowed your emotions to fumble this bag because I don't care who's right. I don't care who's wrong. The world is now looking at how Monique dragged DL Hughley on stage. Like y'all, 
in business, you have to, for the most part, you have to check your feelings and emotions at the door. Like, whenever I am, like, whenever I encounter what I know is going to be a tough conversation at work, I usually try to schedule it out because I want to give myself time to get all my emotions out. I don't address things when I'm in an emotional state. I don't. I don't address business when I'm emotional about it. I don't address grievances or um, any communication, like any disconnects that I have with any of my teammates at work or outside of work and organizations that I'm a part of. I don't discuss things when I'm in an emotional state, when I'm upset, when I'm hurt, when I'm angry. I do not address it. I give myself time, walk it off, go walk around, go think about all the assumed positive intent. I take myself through that thought process. And then once I get all the emotions out of it, then I address it. And you know what I address it with? Facts. I address it with things they can't deny. Whether it be data, whether it be numbers, whether it be historical events, I bring back examples. I don't address things when I'm in an emotional state. Because what does that do? What does that do besides make you look like you cannot handle business? And especially as women and as black women, we have to be really, really like, we have to be really conscious of that. Because everywhere you turn, they're looking for an opportunity to say, hmm, see, see that this is exactly why. This is exactly why. So, yeah, again, I'm not saying who's right, who's wrong, but what I am here to do is to teach you, to teach all of my listeners, whether it be man, woman, boy, girl, whatever, teach all of you how to effectively advocate for yourself that doesn't create embarrassment for you, or it doesn't cause you to be pushed aside, or doesn't cause you to be embarrassed doesn't cause you to be, um, cause your career to be like taken, taken aback or what word am I trying to say? Um, cause you to decline in any way, right? Because look, I don't know how this is going to pan out, but it, from the outside looking in, it looks like this is going to be another professional decline for Monique because it looks like she can't work with people. It looks like she doesn't know how to handle business effectively because sis, everything isn't going to go your way. It's not. You win some and you lose some. And let's 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 take it back. Y'all. Humility literally is key. Humility is literally the way that you're going to continue to elevate. Because granted, I know that your resume is long, Monique. But to say, oh, Monique don't close for nobody. Cool, I get it. But sometimes you may not close every show. Like, seriously, like, y'all, literally the quickest way up is to stay down, is to stay humble. Y'all, the quickest way up is to stay humble. Like, granted, y'all, I know you all see the books and me on speaking engagements and on flyers and all that. And like literally nobody, nobody saw when I was also the mascot for teams and I had to volunteer to work on weekends to just be the mascot and wave at people and hug kids. Like nobody saw when I had to volunteer to help a department or to help a colleague. And that thing has nothing to do with my job description, my job description, but because I did not want to see them fail, I humbled myself and I did it. Nobody's seen, like even recently, like I'm about to, I won't mention that, okay. But like everybody, everybody wants to say, oh, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do that. Listen, if you're not a team player, people are not going to want to work with you. Humility literally is key. 
All right. So I want you all to write this down. Number one, the number one way to um, effectively advocate for yourself is number one, this conversation should happen in private. This conversation should happen between you and that direct stakeholder who is going to dictate the outcome. Whether it be your boss, whether it be in Monique's case, the um, her lawyer, or whether it be her agent, her the performance individual, the um, promoter, this conversation should happen in private with the immediate stakeholder that's going to dictate the outcome. One example I can give is, um, I remember for years I was advocating for my staff to get this one particular thing that I really wanted them to get. And I was advocating it to my vice president who I reported directly to at the time. I was reporting directly to my vice president and, you know, I had everything lined up. I would always approach him with the statistics and this is why this should happen. This is what I'm fighting for. What, like what was, what's the decision? And for years, I would continue to revisit the conversation and he would say no for years. And I, I think at one time, at one point he asked me, okay, well, like, is your staff upset with me? And I said, absolutely not. And they'll never know that I'm upset with you, even though I am. <laughs> um, because any grievances that I have with you is going to take place in the four walls of this office. Once I step outside of this office, oh, it's team, it's team whatever you say all day, every day. Because to them, I'm pushing your strategy. I'm pushing your agenda. Yo, what's going on? Hope all is well. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And this is Nice and Neat, the podcast. With three quintessential friends dedicated to the 360 degree development of men. Our goal is to not only share our experiences, but offer as much value as we possibly can through the lessons we've learned along the way. When I say we talk about everything, we talk about everything. Character, discipline, career development. Oh, and let me not forget, we get real personal. Now make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our episodes. Write a review. Let us know what you think. Enjoy. However, in private, you know that I don't agree with this, but that's not their business. So the conversation should happen in private. All right. Number two, I hope you guys are writing this down. Number two, I mentioned this a little bit. Bring the facts. Bring the facts. Why is this happening? What have you done? How have you contributed? Why is this important? Um, if you have historical uh, examples, then bring those. Bring things that you've seen done in the industry um, that happened successfully. Bring what you're like, just advocate the why and you need to bring facts. Data speaks for itself. Statistics speak for itself. If it's happened before, that speaks for itself. Okay, so bring the facts. Number three, go in knowing what you want from the conversation. OK, you should already know the ending point. You should already know what exactly it, what exactly it is that you want, the outcome that you want so that you can communicate that clearly and effectively to that stakeholder. OK. So three things. Number one, it should be done in private. Number two, bring the facts Number three, go in knowing what you want from the conversation. I hope this was helpful. I hope this can not only help the woman, the black woman, the whatever group you fall into. I want this to be able to help everyone because I think this is a tool that everyone can utilize. Y'all, I'm your host, Chanel S. Reynolds. You're listening to episode two of the Success Playbook podcast. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Yo, Prime members, so check this out. We are here to talk about our favorite thing in the world, and that is Amazon Prime. That's right. We all have different interests, but there's one thing that brings us together, Prime. As members ourselves, we found ways to maximize our Prime benefits to get the most out of our passions. From fast and free shipping, streaming of movies and music, and even exclusive deals and discounts, Prime has it all. And what's great is that you can use all of these services to elevate your hobbies and interests. Whether you're a bookworm, a fitness fanatic, or a gaming guru, Prime has something for everyone. I promise you that. So go ahead, explore and indulge in all that Prime has to offer. We promise you won't be disappointed. Time to get more out of whatever you're into, Prime. And that's that on that.